<laughs> Hola, and welcome to the Cancun Airport. Now brace yourself for the gauntlet of taxi drivers that await you from the moment you exit customs. Unless you're planning on paying whatever inflated prices that these vendors quote you, be prepared to no gracias your way to wherever you're headed. Our plan? Take the Adeo bus to central Cancun, then take a taxi to Puerto Juarez to catch the ferry. You'll find the whole ordeal is worth it, as you're about to witness beautiful Isla Mujeres. Luckily, our accommodation was located on a quiet street off the busy main road. We had a big, bright room with air conditioning and a shared kitchen area. It even had a nice rooftop pool. But after a long day of travel, we wanted to unwind at the beach with a cold beverage. So we headed off to Playa Norte, which was a short 10-minute walk away. And it was at this moment where all of the stress of the day's travel started to melt away. The next morning, we got an early start and headed back to Playa Norte to grab a spot before the crowds arrived, and for a few hours, we practically had the entire beach to ourselves. Slowly, as the island woke up, the crowd started to trickle in and boats from Cancun parked themselves offshore and unloaded dozens of day-tripping tourists. Even then, the beach never seemed overwhelmingly crowded. It certainly didn't stop us from coming back the next few days. We did check out other beaches in the area which were equally beautiful, but something about the vibe and energy, the people watching, and of course the turquoise blue water makes Playa Norte hard to beat. No trip to Isla Mujeres would be complete without making a trip to Punta Sur, the southernmost tip of Isla Mujeres and home to some of the most crystal clear blue water you'll find on the island. And there's no better way to get around the island than on a golf cart. It's believed that Isla Mujeres served as a sanctuary devoted to Ishel, the Mayan goddess of the moon, fertility, and abundance. And only Mayan women were allowed to inhabit the island at the time. In 1517, Spanish colonizer Francisco Hernandez de Cordoba happened upon the island during a freak storm. And after observing numerous female statues dotted throughout the island, he called it Isla de Mujeres, or Island of Women. First at the very tip of the island are the remains of a temple dedicated to the goddess Ishel. Little remains of the temple now due to hurricane damage and decay over time. It is now part of a garden that houses modern sculptures depicting the goddess herself and of Mayan myths and civilization. The beautiful panoramic views and cultural significance of Punta Sur make it a worthwhile place to visit. But we were itching to get in that beautiful water, so we hit the road again in search of a beach 
that's when we stumbled upon this place. $150 pesos, or roughly 10 US dollars, get you admission to the beach club, which includes lounge chairs and an umbrella. The crystal clear water and the variety of fish here make it an ideal place for snorkeling. The fish were definitely not shy. After a refreshing swim, we were ready for lunch. There just happens to be a lively reggae bar and restaurant just across the street from Garafon de Castilla, aptly named The Joint. But we had a different place in mind, so we hopped back in the golf cart and made our way back up north. On our last visit to Isla Mujeres in 2014, we had an unforgettable meal at a restaurant run by a fisherman's co-op called Coctelería La Justicia Social. We were delighted to hear that the restaurant was still going strong and run by the same owner, but at a different location and under a different name, La Justicia de Don Pino. Renowned for their fresh seafood, we ordered the must-try mixed ceviche and shared the grilled lobster. got to meet the man himself, Senor Don Pino. After a delightful meal, we headed back to our accommodation and then, you guessed it, Playa Norte. Nighttime had come, and it took some effort to pry Amy away from our favorite beach club, Las Hamacas. <laughs> yes, it's true, but it was our last night on Isla Mujeres and I did not want it to end. So what better way to stretch out our last few hours on the island than by ordering another cocktail while we figured out what to do for dinner. Bars and restaurants line the pedestrian-friendly street, Miguel Hidalgo, with food options ranging from upscale dining to budget-friendly tacos and quite a few Italian restaurants. But just around the corner from Stingray on Avenida Adolfo Lopez Mateos, street food vendors set up shop as the sun sets, and that's where we were headed. <laughs> After a fun-filled whirlwind trip exploring the Yucatan, it was wonderful to spend a few days relaxing on the beautiful beaches of Isla Mujeres. 
What are some of your favorite Mexican beach destinations? Feel free to share in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. We've got quite a busy year ahead, so make sure to subscribe to our channel and see where we wander off to next.